Hello my dear friends. I welcome all of you to my chemistry YouTube channel. Today our video is about principle of H1 NMR spectroscopy. Basically there are two approaches where we can discuss the principle. One is called classical approach and second is called quantum approach. In this video we are going to focus on quantum approach principle of proton NMR spectroscopy. So let's start the video. Let's consider the ethanol molecule and as you can see there are six hydrogen nuclei present in the ethanol molecule but when there is no external field what happens these all six hydrogen nuclei get oriented in a random motion and because of that they are having same energy that is they are degenerate nuclei. But the moment you start the external magnetic field what happen they get split up into two energy nuclei the lower energy nuclei is called as E alpha energy level and upper energy level nuclei is called as E beta level. In a lower E alpha the hydrogen nuclei has a parallel spin with respect to applied magnetic field. On the other hand the E beta nuclei has anti parallel spin and basically in this the E alpha is in lower energy and E beta is having the higher energy level. So you can see that the moment you start the magnetic field they get split into two different energy level. Afterwards when the radio frequency is false on this active nuclei under the condition of resonance. Basically resonance is the condition in which we match exactly match the energy of the two system. Here in this case the one system is radio frequency energy and second is the difference between the E alpha and E beta energy level. So if you wanted to have the NMR spectroscopy signal you need to apply radio frequency which exactly match the energy of E alpha and E beta energy level. So the moment you giving the radio frequency what happened the lower energy nuclei E alpha nuclei absorb the energy and start to get excited at higher energy level thereby they change its spin and the parallel nuclei get anti parallel at higher energy level but while coming back to ground state E alpha they again change the spin. So now you can see the after absorption of radio frequency the flipping process flipping is actually the excitation of nuclei to higher energy level and after staying for some time at higher energy E beta energy level they will get back to the lower energy E alpha level and this is how the flipping and relaxation process is occurs simultaneously and because of that actually we get a net NMR signal. The difference between the E beta and E alpha is equal to H into rho into H0 divided by 2 pi where H is a Planck's constant, rho is gyromagnetic ratio, H0 is external magnetic field strength and uh, mu is frequency of light. So if I compare now here equation 1 and equation 2 I can conclude in terms of frequency. So frequency of the signal we can say equal to gyromagnetic ratio into H0 divided by 2 pi. Now let's discuss how the radio frequency and magnetic field of the 
external field plays the important role for nmr signal so if you are applying the variety of magnetic field strain the corresponding radio frequency value can be changed so let's start discussion here so if you are using 60 megahertz the corresponding magnetic field strain will require 1.41 tesla for 100 megahertz we require 2.35 tesla whereas for 200 megahertz we need 4.70 tesla for 300 megahertz we require 7.01 tesla and for 500 megahertz we need 11.74 tesla and so on and so forth these values of radio frequency in megahertz and magnetic field strength in a tesla are actually obtained by using the equation delta e is equal to e beta minus e alpha so uh, here planck's planck's constant is constant the gyromagnetic ratio for proton is also constant 2 pi is constant only thing is changing is changing the uh, frequency of radio radio light and only the field strength of magnet now let's look at the what are the different factor can affect significantly the quality of nmr signal here we are using the magnet which has the uh, strength of 2.35 tesla and for its the corresponding the value of radio frequency is 100 megahertz now in the in this case we will get the lower quality nmr signal because the point here we are using the low strength magnet on the contrary, if I use the strong magnet which has the strength of nearly equal to 11.74 Tesla and the corresponding radio frequency is 500 megahertz, you can see we will get the good quality spectra. But the question here, how come we got the poor signal in case of lower magnet strength and the good quality signal in case of higher magnetic field strain and that can be answered actually based upon the population of nuclei at E alpha energy level. So remember that when we have the low magnet strength the population of active nuclei at lower energy level is less but the moment you apply the high magnet which has the high magnetic field strength what happened the difference between the e alpha and e beta energy level get enhanced and consequently the population of h1 nuclei at lower energy level that is e alpha level get more so if you compare here delta e1 and delta e2 del delta e2 has higher value of energy and because of that effect, the population of H1 nuclei at E alpha level is more. And thus, what happened? We will get the more absorption of radio frequency, and that is get result in the good NMR spectra. So, if you are looking for good NMR spectra, you have to always use the higher value of radio frequency and the higher magnetic field strain this is all about h1 nmr spectroscopy principle in terms of quantum mechanical approach thanks for watching that's all signing off dr atul nagpure and this is all about delta e and delta e2 thank you very much